In this presentation, we will take a look at the audit process related to retained earnings and dividends. Now, when we consider retained earnings, note that we're thinking about the balance sheet. We're in the equity section and specifically we are in retained earnings. What is retained earnings? It's going to be that account that's the accumulation of earnings over time. So whenever we close out, in essence, the income statement, the net income, you'll recall, is going to be increasing retained earnings and retained earnings then going up by the net income down by a loss if the company happened to have a loss and then it's going to be down going down by any dividends that we take out so when we take the dividends and pay the earnings that have been retained from the company for the income that's accumulated over time and been uh, accumulated in the account of retained earnings we then pay it to the owners at some point hopefully in the form of dividends and the dividends then of course are kind of like draws and they would be for a sole proprietor they would be draws kind of like draws for a sole proprietor although they're going to go through some more bureaucratic process in order to have the dividends and they're taxable but in any case in their they, their draws or like draws in that they will be decreasing the uh retained earnings so given that note that retained earnings shouldn't have a lot of transactions to it because i mean if, if it's a, nothing unusual happened if it's a really kind of plain normal type of year then retained earnings should be what it was at the end of last year nothing should happen to it except for some dividends should be uh, taken out of it, which should be a pretty straightforward, not too many transactions with regards to dividends decreasing retained earnings. And then of course we have the net income that would roll over to it. So it's really just uh, rolling over retained earnings and then taking out the dividends. That means not many transactions with regards to retained earnings typically should be fairly simple to audit. We should be able to basically consider all the transactions that are included in it uh, uh on more of a kind of a substantive type procedural uh, process primary concern with relation to dividends is primary concern is over violations of corporate bylaws or debt covenants so any kind any kind of violations of the bylaws is going to be our, our major concern with regards to the dividends and recall that the dividends are going to be the items that are leaving so we're going to be paying out uh the dividends which will be reducing the retained earnings if and and we're going to be paying them to the owners the stockholders of the organization so they're going to be uh, retained earnings increases we're going to pay them out in the form of dividends dividends being the earnings that have accumulated over time that we're distributing to the owners the owners being the stockholders if an independent dividend dispersing agent is used the auditor will confirm the amount dispersed with the agent the amount is then agreed with the amount authorized by the board of directors so once again, if it's a publicly traded company, we have this basic bureaucratic kind of process, third party individual that we can really use within the auditing process, which is kind of the function of it or part of it that we can uh, go to and confirm these transactions with. So if an independent dividend disbursement agent is used, kind of like a third party individual outside, not directly connected to the company, therefore good audit evidence to go talk to that individual audit will confirm the amount dispersed dispersed with the agent the amount is then agreed with the amount authorized by the board of directors if an independent agent is not used however so we now what if we don't have that independent agent uh and if it's a publicly traded company you would think you probably would if it's not a publicly traded company then it's quite possible we do not in that case auditor will recompute the amount of the dividend authorized by the board of directors so note when we have the dividends it's one of those kind of key uh issues that should be authorized by the board of directors and then therefore we can go through the authorization process to make sure that the dividend process was properly authorized and we can re we can recompute what was uh, authorized by the board of directors so we can then the amount of dividends authorized by the board of directors and trace the amount to the cash disbursements or dividends payable so then of course We'll take that recalculation and trace it out to what actually happened. Now we're going to consider retained earnings. So that's going to be the accumulation of the net income minus the disbursements, the dividends. Retained earnings are generally affected by the current year's income or loss and the dividends declared and or paid. Now note, when we consider the dividends, that's going to be an important point when we consider the valuation of retained earnings. Because remember, there's basically three time periods that you have a dividend. You declare the dividend and then you have a point in time basically when you the people that are holding the dividends that's who's going to get the dividends and then you pay the dividends and the two important points from a financial accounting standpoint is uh when should we record the dividend uh even though it's not paid we typically record it when it's declared so then we're going to record